Hey everyone, welcome back to Tip of the Week. In this week's video, I want to give you some quick and creative landscape editing tips so that you can modify your next landscape shots inside On One Photo Raw 2020. So inside On One Photo Raw 2020, we'll start with our first landscape tip, and that is how to deal with a blown out background in your landscape scene. So with this landscape, we're shooting into the sun here. And with most landscapes where we're shooting into the sun, we're going to get this large tonal area in our background, and more often than not, it's going to be quite blown out. So there's a couple different ways that we can deal with that. The first way is to do it inside of the Develop tab. So inside of the Develop tab here in my Tone and Color pane, we're first going to use our Exposure slider, and that's going to dim down these blown out areas in our sky. But before we start modifying our exposure, I want to see my clipping warnings first. So to see my clipping warnings, I'm going to hold down my J key on my keyboard. So with this red overlay, that's showing me all of my true white without any detail, which is basically a big blown out area in my sky. So what we can do is we can head to our exposure slider and we can pull it back until we remove all of that blown out area in our image, just like that. But by pulling back on the exposure, obviously we're darkening the entire photograph and we're losing a lot of the life inside of these mid-tone areas and the shadows and even these highlights within our grass area. So we need to help our photograph out by pulling up on another couple sliders. So the first slider I'm going to pull up on, since we darkened this image, is I'm going to pull up on my mid-tones. So by pulling up on my mid-tones, that's going to increase the grays in the photograph, and it's going to liven up this area in my foreground. Now I'm going to head over and I'm going to pull up on my shadow tones. That's going to bring out all of the darker tones in my foreground, so now we can see all of these shadowy areas a lot better. So now that we've brightened up these mid-tones and our shadows, I'm going to head up to my contrast slider, and to make sure the image isn't flat, I'm just going to pull up on it, and that's going to incorporate a little bit of that contrast and detail back into the shot. So now if I hold down the J key, I have no blown out areas in my image, but if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, we've corrected for that blown out sky area really easily by modifying our exposure slider and then pulling up on our midtones and our shadows. The second way that I like to correct for a blown out background is to use a local adjustment layer. So with this photograph, if I reset all of these adjustments that we just applied, I'm just gonna head up to my tone and color pane and just to set the basic look for this shot, I'm going to go into my camera profile menu and I'm going to choose this camera Velvia. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, it's really just brightening up the saturation and increasing the highlights in our foreground, but we still have this big blown out background area in our sky. So if I hold down my J key, it's almost even larger now. But a quick way to fix that is to use a local adjustment layer. So I'm going to head into my Local Adjustments tab, and with this new Local Adjustment layer, I'm going to make sure it's set to Darken, and I'm probably going to pull back on the exposure, kind of the same we had it earlier at about 1.5. Perfect. And to mask this onto my photograph, I'm going to use an adjustable gradient. So to grab my adjustable gradient, I'm just going to hold down Shift and hit K on my keyboard. And now I'm going to use a gradient to naturally blend this adjustment onto my sky area and not affect my foreground. So we're gonna head up to our preset and we're gonna choose a preset that makes sense. Well, with this linear bottom here, this little icon is showing me that the white is going to be on top, which is where it's going to apply my adjustment. And then the black is on bottom, which is where it's going to conceal the adjustment from my foreground. So we'll click linear bottom and then I'll just drop this on my horizon line, pull it down a little bit now if I hold down my J key, I have this tiny area of blown out white, which I could always fix with my local adjustment layer. I could pull back on the exposure a little bit more, like that, and there we go. If I turn off this local adjustment layer, does an awesome job of just toning down that area in my background. And if I wanna make it a little more lively, I can always head down into this adjustment and I can pull up on my midtones just a hair or my whites 
but keep in mind that by pulling up on these brightening sliders, you're going to be incorporating more of that blown out white into your sky. But it's not always bad to have a little bit of blown out area. It's not a big deal unless you're really, really particular about the true whites and true blacks in your image. And now let's move on to our second tip here, which is how to selectively apply filters and adjustments by using a luminosity mask. And with luminosity masks, one of my favorite things to use them on is Milky Way photos. So I have this astro photo here of the Milky Way, and I'm just going to go into my tone and color pane, and I'm just gonna modify a couple sliders to set the foundational look first. So I'm gonna head into my exposure slider, and I'm gonna pull it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna pull up on my midtones of hair, my shadows, just like that. And then I'm gonna go up and add some contrast. So now if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, I just have a basic foundational look similar to the one that we were using on the last photo, except in this case, we're actually pulling up on the exposure slider and then our midtones and our shadows. And obviously when we pull up on those three, it's going to remove some contrast from our photo. So we went back in and we pulled up on the contrast slider. So now that we have this foundational look set for our astro shot, I'm gonna head into the effects tab I'm gonna add a filter, and one of my all-time favorite filters for modifying astrophotography is the Curves filter. So I'm gonna click on Curves. So with this Curves filter, I'm gonna use it to make these stars up here really pop out of the frame and make this scene come to life a bit more. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head down into my Tone Curve, and on this bottom left area, right above my black point here, I'm gonna pull down, and that's gonna add in some contrast. And then I'm gonna head up to my mid-tone area. I'm gonna click on that, and then I'm gonna drag it up. And all this is doing is it's incorporating contrast, and then it's pulling up on the mid-tones. It's sort of working like a sunshine filter, except now we have complete control of our contrast with our shadow tones and the brightness of our mid-tones. So if I turn this off and on, Obviously it darkens up the entire scene way too much. So what we can do is we can selectively apply this to the brighter areas in our sky here by using a luminosity mask. So inside of my curves filter, I'm gonna click on my masking options. I'm gonna view my mask and then I'm gonna select lumen. And whenever you create a luminosity mask, it's going to make a mask for you based off of the bright and dark areas in your photograph. And remember that white reveals and black conceals. So with this mask here, you can see that the brighter areas are getting more of that white applied to them, while the darker areas in the photograph don't really have anything applied to them at all and remain black where the adjustment isn't being applied to. So inside of this tone curve, we can actually modify the look of our mask by using our levels slider. So if we wanna modify this luminosity mask to strictly apply this curves filter to the star area, we can use the level slider here to do that. So the level slider works really, really easily. So inside of this level slider here, this far left point is my shadows. This middle point is my midtones, and this far right point is my highlights. So if I wanna remove one of these tones from my mask, all I have to do is pull right on it. So if I wanna remove some shadow tones from this mask, I can just pull right on this far left point. And you can see it removes a lot of those shadowy tones from my photograph. If I want to add in some of these tones to the mask, I just have to pull them to the left. So if I wanna bring in more midtones to this mask, I can pull the midtone point to the left. And you can see it incorporates more of that mask into those areas in my midtones. So I can just play with these sliders here. I'm gonna incorporate a little bit more of my highlights. Or move a little bit more of our shadow tones. And then we'll bring in some more mid-tones. Probably just like that. So now we have this mask completely applied to our sky area, a little bit of our mountain, and just a hair of our reflection on the lake. So now if we click view, and we turn this off and on here, now we have that luminosity mask strictly applying this tone curve filter to our star area and leaving all of these other areas 
nice and untouched. And we can always go in and we can modify the tone curve to adjust for our photo. So now we're on my last quick and creative landscape editing tip, and this one is how to deal with reflections within your scene. So with this photograph here, I'm just going to set the foundational look for it by heading over to my tone and color pane, and I'm just going to select AI Auto. So now I've set the foundational look for my shot here, but if I look into my water, it looks a little dull and a little bit flat. So one thing I like to do with most of my reflections is I like to add a glow filter onto it and selectively apply it. So for this photograph here, I'm going to go into my effects tab, I'll add a filter, and to bring out that nice silky smooth water in the reflection, I'm going to click glow. And in this glow filter, one of my all time favorite preset styles for modifying reflections in water is if I go into my more styles here, this charge more subtle. So if I choose this and I turn this off and on, you can see it applies a nice silky smooth glow to that water. But up here in the top area, it darkens it up a bit much and it kind of takes away from the true colors. So to selectively apply this to our water area, I'm going to grab my masking bug. So to selectively apply this to our water area, I'm going to hit M on my keyboard to grab me my masking bug. And your masking bug works the exact same way as your adjustable gradient. So if we want to apply this to our foreground area, we can head up to our top tool modifier bar. Oops. We can go into our presets and we can choose linear top. So that way the white area is on our foreground and the black area is on our background. Now I'll just drop this down pull it down a little bit. And now if I turn this off and on here, see how that just richens up the water and really adds to the look of the reflection. I use this on mostly any reflection in my photos and it turns out awesome. And one thing we could do if we don't want this applied to certain areas on our reflection is we could zoom in. So I'm just going to hit Z on my keyboard to grab my zoom tool. Then I'll then I'll zoom into this tree. And if I want to remove this from areas of my tree, I can grab my masking brush by hitting B on my keyboard. I'll lower my brush size a bit. I'll switch it from paint in to paint out by holding down shift and hitting X on my keyboard. And then I can just brush this glow filter away from the areas that I don't want it to be applied to. So that's a quick way to deal with reflections inside your landscape scenes. Thanks everybody so much for watching. I hope you learned some editing techniques for your next landscape photos. If you liked the video, hit that like and subscribe button so that you can stay updated for more tip and trick videos from On One Photo Raw 2020.